Check this out. I just picked up this little Yanmore 135. Not really sure why I bought it. It was cheap, so went ahead and uh, picked it up. So there's some of the parts that you see missing for it. So the issue with this guy is, is apparently they took apart the injection pump, put it back together, and it only runs wide open and won't stop. So I guess we'll see if we can investigate that. So I put some plastic over it to keep any dirt from getting in it on the way home. Uh, just a two-wheel drive tractor. Um, I have one just like it. The next size bigger. It's four-wheel drive. But it also has brand new tires on it. So that's a plus. Those will probably go on my other one. All right, so the guy told me what he thinks is going on is it's out of time. I guess this little gear here with the weight on it controls the governor and the fuel rail. So if that's the case, the fuel rail up in there, and it's free and it slides. If that's the case, we should be able to try and start it and manually move this, and it should do something like it should throttle it down or not I see like looks like fuel leaking in all that that's good but if I move this and it doesn't do nothing then I think it's something in the pump if that's the case I have another pump yeah let's just uh, get a battery and see what this thing will do You know, the injector actually fires off the camshaft on them lobes. I think it's something in the pump. So, being that I have another pump down here, let me go get it. And we'll uh, swap them out and see if that makes a difference. Pop this guy off of here. This is the pump I got off the parts tractor, 2TR13. This one says 2T73. They look the same though. Let's 
See, this one feels like nothing's hooked up. Like, there's no resistance on this rod. This one, you can feel resistance, like it's moving something. I don't know why they took it apart. Anyways, but... I'm just telling you what I know. So... Let's go ahead and hook this up. I'm worried there's some, where this has been sitting in the building for a while, I'm worried there's some dirt down in these. So I'm just going to crank it over until we get a geyser of fuel coming out. That way if there is, it should blow the dirt out and not force it into the injectors.
All right. All right, so what have we learned? We learned that that injector pump was... They messed something up in it. I don't know that much about the internals of one, but obviously they did something wrong. Because the guy I bought it from, he kept trying to tell me there's something wrong with the timing. But, like, I got to thinking about it as I'm working on it, and unless they took the camshaft out, you know, this in injector pump. There's two lobes on the cam in there and they just hit the bottom of these so there's no timing on the pump itself you know what i mean it just sits in there and it hits like some like in that massey ferguson it's got a gear on the back and it's got to be timed but yeah this there's no timing for it so anyways and the guy told me he drained out the rear end oil so i gotta go get some of that that's why i didn't run it very long and you can see i don't have a radiator and stuff so i'm gonna run to the store get some rear end oil and some gasket maker put and see if we can't get this thing back together and drive it off here All right, started putting some of the covers back on. So I figure while this fluid is drained out, the guy, I don't know if I mentioned, drained this back axle, all the fluid out. He said it looked bad. And yeah, so since it's empty, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this right here's your hydraulic filter or screen. It's like a metal screen, three bolts. I'm gonna pull them out, pull it out, and that should tell us what kind of shape the inside of that transmission's in. All that slime on there yeah that's about what I expected I said it was real thick. Yep, he wasn't lying. Just take that off. Clean it right out here. Oh, that's a problem. That's That, my friends, is supposed to be stuck in the end of this thing. That's a problem.
Okay, so what I was doing was making some spacers because there's a spacer goes from the bottom to this radiator here and I guess they're pretty common to be lost because they're missing on my tractor. So I was using some wooden blocks, but it's a little bit too thick. So I'll have to trim that down. But I think now that it's dark, that's just going to be a tomorrow project. But um, check out this flashlight. This thing is freaking bright. It's a uh, three night light, so I have a link to that in the description. Super handy. I find myself carrying this all the time. All right, new day, different weather. So we got the radiator buttoned up. All right, now let's try this again. Now here's a prime example why anytime I get a anything that's had the radiator off, I always, normally when it's warm, I always fill it full of water to make sure it don't leak because we got a leak right up there running down. At least it's bright green. It's easy to see. But anyways, that'll, I want to drive this off the trailer. So I guess now let's see if we can get her fired up. So just started up. I seen the camera died. Hopefully it caught that. So 
What I want to do now is start it up and move it back and forth and see what works, what doesn't work, so we know what to fix. So, hopefully, it just starts right back up. Now that I've got it to run and i got to test, the transmission goes through all its gears and high and low. The PTO works. Yes, it's worth fixing. So mainly I bought it for parts, but it seems to be a good running tractor. So I want to investigate where that coolant link is. I think it's behind that plate right there. That's what it looks, where it looked like it was coming from, so... Let's get uh, get the fuel tank and the battery out of the way. Take that plate off and see what we're working with. All right, here's that plate that was leaking. So can y'all see that? That thing's bent right there in the middle. So that's interesting, but yeah, it was leaking right out the top, and I'll explain why. So I'm going to go try and unbend this and clean it up a little bit, and then we'll put some gasket maker on it and throw it back together. All right, got it cleaned up, got some gasket maker on there. So let's put this guy back together. I've got to get this on here. All right, so that's that one hour gasket stuff really it's two hours you got to wait you hand tighten it wait an hour and then you fully torque it and then you got to wait another hour before you can put fluid in it but anyways so we'll work on something else while that's uh curing i know we'll work on some cosmetics so you can see the hood's off but it's in two pieces so it's two parts of the hood i think they're spot welded together and they break off over time but anyways i'll pull this off and clean this up weld them back together and then we'll have a functional hood Is that it? That's how I got that. So I'm gonna weld that and then I'll bend this down and weld it to keep everything nice and 
Right. All right, turned into a couple days later. So I got that plate tightened up. Let's see if it leaks out antifreeze now. Shouldn't. Now I want to replace this fuel filter while I'm here. I mean, it doesn't look too terrible in there, but let's see how the filter looks. Yeah, filter's got some rust and stuff on it. Definitely won't hurt it. There we go. I'll leave that loose and when we put the fuel tank back on, I'll fill it up to get majority of that air out. This throttle mechanism right here goes up and it's supposed to stop when it hits a screw but the bushings in this are kind of a little worn so I need to fix that but for right now I'm going to do it the quick and dirty way. I'm going to take this piece of washer and weld it onto there that way it's got a firm stop. The problem is you hit it full throttle it jumps up on there and then it won't return. So, so I'm just going to weld just a piece of a washer right to that, give it something good to stop to, and yeah. So that needs to go right there. Put some view on this thing.
so I let this thing run for a little over an hour now. And it's all right. One thing I did off camera was the thing I ran, I drove it around, and then it just died like it ran out of fuel. And I changed out this injector because it just, it didn't seem like it was running right. And I could crack the line on that one to bleed it, and it wouldn't do nothing. But then with that tight, this one just didn't seem like it was working good. So I swapped it out with another one I had. And now it's running all right. Not as good as I would like, but it's running pretty decent. Let it run here about an hour. It didn't appear to be overheating or anything, so that's a plus. Another thing with this guy is my hydraulics on the three-point. They'll just raise up just a little bit, and then whenever you step on them, they just sink down so far, and then it gets solid, so that's an issue. Also, I found out whenever you push in the clutch it bogs down the motor which makes me believe the throw out bearing is bad so that's another thing and it don't have any brakes so kind of weighing all my options here here's the injector i pulled out of it and this was loose in there so i guess somebody before me had it didn't have it seated all the way so then I got this other spare injector. I need to clean that up some. But this one should be good. All right, it is been like a month later. So I decided I'm going to fix this. So off camera, I went ahead, I put new brakes on this side. And when I get new ones for the other side, I'll show you changing them. I got a new throw out bearing for it. Another thing that's really bothering my OCD is that this tire's on backwards. So luckily those are two piece rims, so we can just unbolt them. Hopefully, and flip it around. That's the plan. That way, it'll be going the right direction. Okay, it's like weeks later at this point. So the other day I was messing with this, I'd take the tractor bucket and get it to come apart. It was rusted on there pretty good. So let's put it on the right way now.
All right, hopefully when we air this up, we didn't pinch that too. I don't think I did, but. I don't hear nothing leaking. on this thing. See if we can get y'all some white. I don't know if that helps or hurts it. That should help a little bit. Okay, so you, uh, your brake's back here. To get to that, we need to pull off this uh, differential lock. So much tension on it. Take this out and see how bad they are. So much rust and junk in here, I can't really... Looks like there's a little bit of meat on the pad, but... I'd say they're pretty well shot. drum's pretty crusty, so I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and 
try and polish that out real quick. See, I might just be able to do that by hand. Get these pads off, yeah. Pretty rusty. I mean, there's still meat on the pad, but man, that stuff's rusty in there. Gonna clean this up with a flapper wheel. All right, here's my new pads. There's the part number for this specific. Actually, let's make sure this moves nice and free. Before I go too far. Hmm. I better go ahead and pop this off and clean out where this swivels. Now just brace yourself because these things like to go flying. I'll try and cover it up with my hand. Alright, tension's off of it now. Now hopefully I can knock this out. No, nope. rubber mallet ain't gonna do it. That was all better. The other one was seized in there. And I had a beat on that thing for like, I don't know, a while. <laughs> oh, here's the inside of that. So it's got some O rings here that's to prevent that from getting stuck, but they're long gone. So let me just clean this up real quick and we'll get, get put back in. I don't think a smaller one will go over top of it. Well, maybe it will. Right, I'm gonna get some grease and put on this. Just to hopefully prevent it from corroding up again. I hope. Now for the fun part. Get 
bring this guy back on here. Yeah, it's locked in there. Sweet. All right, these new brake pads are made a little bit taller down here to account for all the years of the brake drum being worn. So, but from the last one, I noticed it's a little too tight to fit in here. So I'm going to grind down a little bit of this and this, get the slide in here better. Then we'll put it on and then see how much we need to take off of this end. good all right it's already done the other side so i figured out the trick is to kind of put them like so and then just put them down in there the springs don't even have tension on that Are these ones shorter okay i'll use these other springs then That's how that works. So let's go put it on the tractor and see if it fits. All right, well, let's see if it fits. I'll put that on. That needs to be down here. It's close. It needs just a little bit taken off. Then to grind these, you want to grind just a little bit off here. Try it and just do just a little bit at a time. Because you want a good snug fit in here, but you don't you still want to be able to spin the wheel. Let's see, it should fit. It now. Nope. Yeah, yeah it does. Okay, sweet. I'm gonna smear a little bit of gasket maker all the way around this where it mates to right here because it's not super important. It just keeps water from getting down in there, but I really don't plan on driving it through a river, so it should be fine, but I'll just smear some around here. Just to help with that. Like I said, I'm just doing a real thin coat. Nothing crazy, because you're not sealing any, any oil or liquid or anything.
There we go. That's supposed to come out. Yep, that baron seized on there. All right, I hammered the shaft off the clutch. So the clutch, it is pretty, it's getting down pretty close there, but I think it'll be all right. <clears throat> All right, let's just hammer this out. Make sure I get these holes. Pull this out. Put some red Loctite on these threads.
All right, I forgot to show y'all when I pulled it out, but here is the uh, throwout bearing, and this bad boy is, uh... well, she's pretty much locked up. I can get it to kind of spin, but it's it's pretty rough, and you can see where it was locked up spinning on the pressure plate, so it'd be ideal to replace this, but I didn't want to put any more money into this tractor, so we're going to reuse this. So I'm going to go ahead and put this and the clutch back on. And then we will change this and put it all back together. So we'll just push that on there. Set that down that pilot hole. And that's there. Pressure plate, I hit that with a wire brush, clean a lot of rust off. So now we got two pins to line up. these two All right, to get this old bearing out, I don't have a press. Probably something I need. So I found a socket that fits in right here. And hopefully it comes out relatively easy. Yep. Yeah, looks about the same. According to this though, that went this way. All right, well, we'll put it back on that way. All right. Does that look like it's going straight to y'all? Looks like it's straight to me. When it bottoms out, you can hear it change tones when you hit it. All right, new throat bearing, sweet. I did put some grease, just a little bit on it, just to keep it from corroding again. Let me slow it down. here yep. line that up and slide that in without rolling away or breaking your back Another problem is... See, I don't think... 
down a little bit. All right, so I used some longer bolts to mesh that together. I made sure the clutch and everything was lined up. But what I think it was, there's a little bit of rust in that clutch, and I think it was just enough resistance to where I couldn't push it on. But so it tightened up real easy with the bolts. It's all put back together. I changed the oil. Yeah, so we should be ready to fire this thing up. So I guess, let's see what it does. Should be able to start it with the clutch in now.
Okay, well, this gets to be even more fun. So I changed this hydraulic pump with a uh, one off a parts tractor head because the rear wasn't working right. And now it actually, when you engage it, the engine's bogging down real hard and it's squealing back here. It's acting like it's trying to pick up something that's too heavy for it. So I wonder if something in that valve back there is messed up. So, only way to find out is uh, let's tear all this off and see what we're working with. Actually, hang on a second. Before I go too crazy, I remember I was messing with these adjustments. Let me make sure I didn't just turn the fluid off. So here's what that's supposed to look like, and here's what I made. So that took me a good solid minute and a half. So I'm just gonna make the top handle a little less wide and call it good. I guess somebody wanted this seat off of here and they just took and cut both of these fender braces. What that does, it ties this to this so they don't wobble like that. Especially this side, it's real wobbly. So I'm bending them back and weld them on there. So put it like it's supposed to be. over here so that looks nice that's a good spot right where it should be so to keep this from being jagged metal I got an idea couple things I want to do right here is someone's taking the light bulbs out of these warning lights one's for oil pressure and one's for temperature I'm gonna put a uh, mechanical temperature gauge on it so I just need the light for the oil pressure to come on so I checked the sensor yesterday with the test light and it does work basically it goes to ground when you don't have oil pressure and then I started up and it went away so it works like it should and we got oil pressure so that's a plus so under here two little i see somebody here's one light somebody has unhooked so let me see let's pull this dash off and i'll see if i got a bulb to fit in it and maybe it'll just work
So neither one of those would work. What it was, was it was missing a little fuse wire on this old fuse block. It had little wires that connected. So I just took a piece of real small wire, put that on there, so now that works. I guess I need to start it, make sure that, that works. But I want to install that temperature gauge before I smoke myself out of here. Chuck right in here, somewhere. Actually, I could move it over and it would cut that hole out there. Yeah, I'll do Ta-da! Alright, then to route this guy, you want it routed with the factory harness. Make sure it doesn't get, not rubbing anything, not going to get ripped off. So... So, stuff all this down in here. Right here is your coolant sensor. So you're gonna wanna take this off. Kind of a pain to get to, but broke it loose with the crescent wrench. Got my drain pan. Oh, perfect. All right, then you're going to need an adapter. So order it specific for this tractor. They have a weird thread on them. This guy just goes right in there. This little hold down bracket you can put on the back of this if you want. I'll probably throw it on and then peel that off of there. And, yep. So now. You know, that's something that's very important to have on a tractor is a temperature gauge and an oil pressure light gauge indicator. Something to tell you if you don't have oil pressure. All right, here's that harness all tied up nice and neat. Going to right there, put all the guards back on, topped it off with coolant. All the fluids are good, so we should be ready to fire this thing up and use it. The only thing I haven't checked is to see if the battery's charging. Which, if it's like the rest of the tractor, it probably won't work. 
So let's fire this thing up. Make sure that light goes off too. Actually, we'll give it a little preheat. So, all fixed up. So I rode out the road and back. It didn't, it didn't overheat, but it was running just over 200, which seemed a little hot to me. But I'm also supposed to have a little more water than antifreeze in it, so probably should do that. But yeah, this was one of those projects that when you buy stuff that don't run there could be a whole lot more wrong with it than what they tell you and this was one of those situations the problem was when i bought it was with the injector pump it would only run wide open that was it that was supposed to be the problem with it 
Then it turned into the throw up bearing was out, didn't have no brakes on it. Hydraulic pump was out. What else was there? It seemed like there was something else too. But yeah, that's just how it goes when you gamble with them. But luckily I had all those parts, so it wasn't really a big deal. But if you would have bought this and didn't have those, that would have you would have spent more than what I paid for this on all all those parts i think this tractor will be really good for mowing that's what the plan may be in the future i don't know when or if it'll even be this year but i kind of want to build a belly mower deck for it i think it'd be perfect for that but we'll wait and see on that anyways here's a comparison between the 135 and the 155 so pretty much the same this one's a smidge longer and the tires are taller but got the same engine so ain't ain't a whole lot of a difference there but i thought y'all might find that interesting well you guys have a good day and uh we'll see you in the next one